Good afternoon. Uh, this actually coming from the Bayou Classic, a, a really hard fought contest. Um, I did expect that to be that way because I knew that uh, when you're talking about a game of that magnitude, I know Gramlin as well as Southern gonna come to play uh, because it's a big game for uh, in-state rivals. So I knew it was gonna be a tough challenge for us, but fortunate enough, we were able to overcome it. And uh, that landed us a spot to uh, play in the uh, SWAC championship game, which we're gonna face a, a very good football team in, in Jackson State. Uh, they complete the season uh, being undefeated. So we know that's a challenge, uh, but we just look forward to the challenge. Coach, do you have a pretty good grasp of what you want to do and, and what you can do to get a different outcome from the last time you played the Swag? Well, I, I wouldn't say uh, to have a different, of course we want a different outcome, but uh, we're going to work our game plan. We think we like the game plan that we had before, uh, and we like the game plan that we're working on right now as we speak. So of course we are, we're going to compete at a high level. Some things that we, we wasn't able to do uh, in the past, but we don't we don't go back to the past. We just look forward to it. Did you learn a lot from that loss? I learned a lot from everything that we do, whether it's a win or loss. We're going to learn. And um, in the in the last four conference games, uh, Deshaun McCray has not been able to break 100 yards passing. And I know passing is an important part of your offense. What are you doing to address that? Well, uh, I, let me do a little correction. He has broken uh, 100 yards. Uh, maybe not in the last game, but he has in the games that we played in conference games that we have played. But uh, for us, the, the thing is, the offense have a lot of different components. Uh, and we just got to make sure that we're doing the things that that's going to help us to be successful. And I think, uh, you know, as far as uh, he's working, you know, a lot of folks, it's so easy. I think when you look at it and you look at a football game and it's so easy to say, oh, the quarterback didn't do this here. But when guys do that, then that let me know that really not really paying attention to the game because it's take 11 components to make sure that that offense works. So uh, we're going to continue to work. Those guys got a great chemistry that they're working on, and we do some great things. And uh, do we need some things we need to correct? Absolutely. Coach, is there one thing that when you look back at the first time you played that you can point to and say, hey, we weren't really good at doing that, but now we're better at it now a couple games later? Yeah, absolutely. You always try to see the things that you're doing that that's worked well for you to see what you can do to make it better. Then you look at the things that didn't work so well. Uh, uh, if it's something that you need or something you need to throw away or something that you can, I guess, in so many ways, change around to make it better for you. So you look at all facets of it because you're talking about a SWAC championship game. So you want to look at everything. You want to make sure that uh, you're hitting on all cylinders. Uh, Coach, the last time, in the last game uh, when Jackson State went up 14-0, uh, and, the, and the crowd was going crazy, and they had momentum. It seemed like you guys got a little, a little rattled. How important will it be this time around to take the crowd out of the game early? Well, uh, we, the, the, the thing we understand, uh, when you play at Southern University, you understand the stage that you're going to play on. So a crowd never been a factor for us. Uh, but even uh, just uh, going back to the, to the game, I mean, we had opportunity. We had some things that we missed on. Uh, we should have scored early in, in, in the game. Uh, we missed on some missed opportunities. So. The crowd is not a factor of us because you're going to have Jaguar Nation there as well. So the crowd won't affect us at all. You said after the game that the part that you felt like you failed on the most was execution. So how do you change that this time to execute in those moments? Again? Well, you continue to work at it. You don't, you don't change. You know, it, it's a thing that when you got an offense uh, of this magnitude, you continue to, to execute at a high level. I think in all three phases, you got to execute at a high level. If you don't execute, uh, I don't think you're going to be – any team, so that, that's always the thing for, uh, I guess, all the teams within this conference. You got to make sure that you execute at a high level, and that's my always been my thing. We want to make sure that we're doing the things that's going to help us be successful. When you look at their schedule, I mean, they've had very few games where they've had to really grind it out and then close, whereas you guys have done so much to get to this point. It's you guys and the adversity that you faced. Does that give you an advantage in a championship game like this compared to them? No, I, I don't think so. I, 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 there's no such thing to me as an advantage. I think, you know, and, and that's why so many things been given and said. But uh, I think you prepare. You know how to get your team prepared to play. And I think when you go into it, you everyone feel that they have a chance. I, I've, I've never met a coach uh, that, that can say that, uh, I don't think we're going to win the game, <laughs> whether he did or not. That's never going to happen. So anytime we step on the field, we feel we can win the game. And I'm sure they feel the same way as well. So there's no advantages. It's just you got to play the game. How key is getting off to a fast start with this game? That's always the key to me. I always want to get off to a fast start and a strong finish. Coach, um, you.
coached in several um, SWAC championship games. Do you, did you always feel like there was a level of intensity that exceeded maybe just a regular you know, season game, that, that it steps up a level? Well, you know, I pride myself on any game that I step on. I feel it's that game because you never know if it's going to be your last. So I want to approach every game that I, I go into. Uh, this could be the last time that I step on this field. So I got to make sure that uh, the memories are great. Uh, I, I don't want to be an excuse. I don't want to uh, be an excuse to uh, certain things. I want a guy that went out there and laid it on the line and, and, and let the chips fall where they may. But, but I mean, when you get to that game, do you notice that the, there's a more intensity on the field in those games because there's so much more at stake? Well, it, to me, again, everything is at stake. Every time you land on the field, I think, you, you, you play to, to win that game. Uh, regardless of what, what the uh, magnitude of the game is. So when you get your team prepared to understand that, uh, and you know, you hit a cliche, but I, I really believe in that. It's a big game because it's the next game. And you got you to gotta do that way. You can't uh, put pressure on yourself for it because of what type of game it is. It's a big game because it's the next game. Does your coaching philosophy change at all for a big game like this? Do you change anything as far as scheduling for the team goes or philosophy the way you call a game? No, I'm 100 miles running. I don't care what, when the game is, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to do what I think we do best and continue to uh, work on that. What are y'all leaving to go to Jackson? Are they asking you to go early for any other festivities? Like the Bayou Classic, you had to go to that Friday luncheon? No, they're not. It's not going to be anything uh, prior to the game, uh, so we'll leave Friday morning. Okay. Coach, you've had, you have some players on this team that have played mm -hmm. in a couple of Bayou, uh, a couple of SWAC championship games in 18 and 19. How valuable is it to have players that have been on that stage? I think you, you can't justify experience. When you have experience, it helps a great deal because uh, you've been there before. So uh, those guys understand, uh, you know, sometimes guys haven't played any, in any type of uh, championship game. So it's a difference, but uh, that's why we, we coach the guys up every day and everything that we do and say so that they understand when they get there, it's not anything that they haven't seen before. Coming into the season, you knew your defensive line was one of the strengths of this team. Now that they in the regular season leading the FCS in sacks, did they kind of exceed your expectations? Yeah, I, I expected that. I, I mean, you always expect that when you know what you're bringing in. But those guys uh, have worked hard, and, and I know those the whole team has worked hard. And, and fortunate enough, right now, um, they're getting to get a chance to to go to the SWAC championship game because so many teams work for this uh, position and don't get it. But uh, we want to. Uh, one of 12 that's here. So we feel confident and, and we love our D-line, what they're doing. Uh, there are some other spots on this field that, uh, on this team that guys are doing well in. Some spots we have to work on and we're going to continue to do that. How would you gauge the confidence level of your team right now? How do they feel going into this game? I mean, you're talking about after playing a game uh, in the Bayou Classic. I don't think a lot of folks understand what the Bayou Classic brings. Uh, it's, a big, it's a big game and I'll say it so that uh, I guess the world can know it's the granddaddy of them all. I mean, when you play in the Bayou Classic, that's why you go to Southern University. That's what you, uh, I grew up as a kid, saying one day, just standing by a fence, I can see it right now. I'm going to play for one of those schools. Uh, that's the mindset. So when you're in Louisiana, or you now uh, the U.S., it doesn't matter. You know about this game right here. So uh, it, it, it's huge, I, I, I say that. But for the opportunity right here, these guys to go play in a game like this here, it's great. Do you think the first meeting irritated your guys the most out of any game this season? Well, if it, if it means something to you, there's no question about it. Uh, but I, I do know the team. I, I know the, the pulse of the team. And I know uh, the mindset of the team. So uh, we'll be ready to play some good football Saturday. You were talking about the offense earlier and you know, the level that it plays at. It's ranked second in the SWAC overall, yet you only have two all-SWAC members that are get postseason honor, and they're both on the offensive line. So what does that say about the weapons and pieces that you have on that offense that you know, they may not get that recognition, but when you look at the stats, they're actually one of the best in the conference. You know, sometimes that happens like that. We understand this year. I, I've been involved in this a long time. Uh, I've seen some guys that, that haven't got the uh, accolades, but that don't change anything. The biggest accolade that you can get, being SWAT champs.
what Coach Robinson meant, meant to you? I, I, he meant a great deal to me because, uh, you know, a lot of folks look at their coaches as a, a father figure. I was fortunate enough to have to be raised uh, in a nice uh, household with my dad and my mom and did a great job. Uh, but just to have that to be extended to me when I went off to college, I, I, you, you'll never forget that. And just some of the things, uh, it's been years ago now, but you can always hear that, that small voice in your, in your head because I never thought I would be a coach, but you can hear some of the things that he said. And, and you kind of start doing some of the things that he did. You didn't think you would do it, but I guess it's just like a lot of muscle memory. But just uh, that game right there probably was one of the toughest games in, in my life that I ever been a part of because, uh, of course, I uh, want to go out there to win it, but then when it was all over it, you're talking about a, a living legend would never uh, grace the sideline once again. Was there a lot of sadness in your, in your heart that day or before the game? No, it was tears of joy uh -huh. because when you've done everything you can do, you win over 400 games, there's nothing you can leave. You don't have to say anything. You can walk away and feel real good and proud about what you've done and the legacy that you left in the lives. Uh, I think more importantly, everybody looking at the games that he won, but the lives that he was able to touch uh, during those years of uh, coaching. Coach, regardless of what happened Saturday, have you have you allowed yourself to think about what you've accomplished? I mean, have you exceeded your own expectations of when you took this job and going through this season? Absolutely not. Uh, when I when I took the job, my, my expectation was to uh, to win the swag. <clears throat> to win the uh, celebration mode. That's just the mindset. Uh, I don't go into any season thinking that uh, I'll go eight and two, eight and three. No, sir. I think I'm gonna go 11 and 0, and that's the mindset. So have I uh, exceeded the expectation? No, because we haven't won all the games that we wanted to win, but are we doing a great job? I think the team is doing a great job because of the mindset and, and the work ethic that they put in, uh, it's paid off. And, you know, I, I think we still got some things that we're gonna get better at. Uh, but I like the uh, the confidence and I like the level that the team is playing at and they understand uh, what's at stake. Quick question about um, stopping Jackson State's offense. You said after last game, you know, you weren't <coughs> expecting Shador to run it as much. Now are you trying to, you know, expecting them to game plan or being prepared for that if it comes? I mean, he's a great football player. Uh, he's going to do what it takes to win. And I think that's what a lot of folks don't realize. Uh, uh, a guy don't have to run to to uh, be able to run. Uh, he does what he needs to do to uh, make sure that his team, that he can spark his team to go. But of course, uh, I think our defensive staff does a great job. And I'm fortunate enough to have a defensive staff that understand with a lot of experience. So uh, they have that in consideration as to what he was able to accomplish the first time. Coach, before the game and by the classic, when you said you thought the team came out flat, what does a coach do when that happens? And what does he do the next day? Does he take action? No, when the team come out flat, what a coach does, he point the finger at himself. You know he got to get that team prepared and be ready to go because you can't come out flat in a game of that magnitude. So I, I, I take that on myself. So that's why you see the sleepless night behind me because I know what we need to do to be a great football team. What kind of things do you say to the coach? I don't say nothing. I talk to myself. It might make me seem like something wrong, but I talk to myself. Thank you all coach with Coach Dewey. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, Coach. I was going to ask him about Corey Roman's injury. <laughs> <laughs>